Will this more hawkish tone put a permanent end to last week's rally? It was how many days? It wasn't even a week ago. Four. It was four days ago, including a weekend. Yes. Including a weekend. So what they, happened? They were talking. What happened, Tim? Well, I, I think what we heard from Bullard last week and, and I think on Friday he said, hey, why is it we have to hear this now when in September there was no sign of inflation and they're telling us about 50 now? And these were the first real comments after the Powell press conference. And, and look, I, you get the sense that the Fed is it's not just concerned about inflation, but really understands that there are structural issues in this inflation. So if you look at the curve, um, it was actually the short end that outperformed and, and, and took over from where we zigzagged a bit on Wednesday of the Fed meeting. You're up 19 points, 19 basis points on the short end of the curve. Market did a lot of pricing in today, and as we, we just heard on Scott's show, I mean, there, there are people that kind of believe 50 is the status quo, but the long end, Treasury rates are breaking out. It's not great for equities. I will say, I, I thought stocks were champs today on a day when after, you know, an 11% rally in the NASDAQ off of last Monday's low and Powell, Powell dropping this bomb on you. Great job by equities. Especially because it wasn't just one 50 basis point hike. I mean, it sounded like he was opening the door to a couple of 50 basis points. There's nothing to prevent the Fed, I'm paraphrasing, but nothing to prevent the Fed from multiple 50 basis point hikes. So they're finally on the right track without question. And Tim is spot on. We play a lot of games on the show, as you oh, know. So many. Too many. And one of the games is if you had told me 24 hours ago, Mel, oh, what yeah. would one happen? Of our favorites. That's one of my personal Mine favorites. Too. No, not it's not. You're game. lying like a rug. But I got to tell you something. Given the rally we saw last week that Tim just alluded to, if you had told me those comments were to come out around 1245, BK was watching them as we we're on our call. I'd be like, easy the SP's down 80 handles, given what we saw last week in that rally. And at one point, the S&P was down, what, 25, 30 handles, and told rally back about 35 handles. It's a remarkable the day. Now, we could say that the bond market is pricing this all right. in, but I'm here to tell you there's no way the equity market is pricing And volatility this all. was down. Uh, again, in, in a world where I've always said more Fed equals more mm -hmm. volatility, I don't right. you know, feel very uh, uh, rewarded by that statement right now. So what do we need to do? And I use we, I guess, like the royal we or we is in the markets. We, Brian Kelly. I mean, if we are to believe that 50 basis points even maybe more than 50 basis points can happen in the next couple of meetings. What do we need to price in at this point? What is not priced in? Uh, well, there's a couple things not priced in. Number one is earnings downgrades, right? We haven't seen really any earnings downgrades from, uh, from anybody uh, out there. That would be a shock to the market. And then number two, this is going to sound a little strange, but if you go further out on the curve to two or three years, you're actually starting to see the market price in rate cuts. And I think that's what's buoying stocks because analysts are saying, hey, listen, Fed's going to raise rates by 50 basis points, 100 basis points. It's going to be short and sharp. You're going to crush inflation. Yeah, we might have a quarter or two of a growth scare. But after that, it's clear sailing. So what we need to price in is actually the Fed raising rates for a longer period of time before the equity market says, hey, this is a problem. To me right now, though, the bond market, via, you know, short the bond market, it's the easiest trade. Long dollar, short bonds. You guys can all trade your equities. I'd rather trade those. <laughs> Dan, what's your take? Yeah, I just tell you this. In, in my career, um, when we've had surprise moves by the Fed, either, you know, cutting because they're worried about some sort of shock to the system or in the instance of maybe um, a surprise rate hike, the market, the stock market usually does the opposite of what they intend it to do. So I don't think stock market investors are really braced particularly well for any sort of big surprises. I think that you made the point, Mel, that, you know, last week we heard from Powell and then today we hear from Powell and they don't seem to like the kind of ratcheting up of the hawkish sort of sentiment. And to Tim's point, fine. Yeah, stocks acted pretty well today in the face of that. But if there are any surprise hikes here, I think the knee-jerk reaction is lower. And then BK mentioned the one thing that the equity market participants don't seem to be kind of focused on right here is that current consensus for S&P 500 earnings this year are expected to be up eight and a half, nine percent year over year. That's just not happening. That's taking us back to that PPI reading that you're seeing in Germany right now. And I don't care. I know we're going to talk about um, Nike in a few minutes here. I don't care what they just printed on this backward-looking quarter. I want to hear about the visibility they have 
going forward here. And I don't think it's going to be particularly great. I don't mean to sound so dire about this, but it really does seem like a lot of analysts right now are kind of whistling past the graveyard here. This is not going to set up to be the 2022 earnings per share year for the S&P 500 that most strategists had just three months ago.